And look at that, our message was received on the server and you can tell because we passed in our client ID and the server sent a message right back that says right back at you, client count number one. I had my first look at the Godot game engine last week. I actually recorded the unboxing of it, if you will, and it's basically me just fumbling through the editor, trying to figure out how the interface works and where everything goes and actually imported an asset and created a primitive. So if you're looking for basically a Godot Hello World, go check out that video. But because this is mostly a multiplayer focused channel, I wanted to dive in and, and see what it could do. And the first thing I did was I created a WebSocket connection between a Godot client and a AWS Lambda server where they can talk back and forth and send messages. While that might be a good place to start, I wanted to see what kind of multiplayer functionality Godot had out of the box, other than WebSockets. Did they have built-in support for RPCs and sync variables and that sort of thing? So diving into their multiplayer documentation, you can see that they've got a high and low level API. They support both TCP and UDP, and they basically encourage you to use their UDP abstraction because it's easy to use. Yeah, they, you lose a little bit of fine grain functionality, but you still have access to those lower level APIs if you want. And if you read through here, they do talk about their mid-level abstraction and the scripts and classes that they use to encapsulate all this functionality. They talk about their hosting resources and how you can set those things up. And because I was interested in setting up a client and server, I took a look at the initializing the network section. They have how to set up a client and server respectively but I felt like this wasn't a complete setup. Like I felt like there was something missing from this documentation. So I went out to the internet and tried to find other resources about how you can get a multiplayer client and server up and running. Like I wanted to see some other people's examples. Well, that ended up being a waste of time because ultimately it really just is this. And I, and I was really impressed by how quickly it was to actually get something up and running. So at the top level, we have this startup control node which may not be ideal for a multiplayer setup in general, but for this Hello World, it's okay. And inside I have a client status panel and also a place to receive messages from the server. And the send message button down here will just send the same canned message to the server. And if we have a look at the code, this is it. This is the whole network functionality we have to create a client and server. And the first thing that happens, of course, is this ready function is called. Then I check for any command line arguments. And where this becomes helpful is if you're trying to execute a Linux executable on a server, like an EC2 instance, you can pass in a command line argument, like in this case, a dash S to indicate to it to run as a server. So that's what we're doing here. And if there's no dash S, if there's no command line argument here, it just assumes to start as a client. So let's take a look at that start server and start client functionality. The first thing we do with the server is we set up some callbacks for when a client connects or disconnects. And those are down here at the bottom. And all I'm doing is just printing out, hey, the client connected or hey, the client disconnected with the client ID that connected or disconnected. And with the client, if we connect to the server, we just update the status to say we connected. And if we disconnect, we just print out a disconnected message. So if we come back up to the start server functionality, the only thing we're doing here is we create this server object with this enet multiplayer peer. We tell the server to start on port 80 and we only allow two clients. And to make sure that Godot knows this is a server configuration, we set this multiplayer peer object to the server configuration we just created. And then for the client, we update the status that, hey, we're connecting to a client. And then we create another multiplayer peer object. We tell it the IP and port of the server we need to connect to. And then we set this multiplayer peer object to the client we just created. So that's it. That is the complete setup we need for the server and client to start properly. So once the client has connected to the server, we can begin sending RPC messages. So let's take a look. So the first RPC here can only be called from clients. That means it's gonna be called from a client, but executed on the server. And we know that because we added this any peer mode to the RPC annotation. And we also have a check here that says is server. And that might be redundant in this case because we already have this any peer mode, but I just wanted to make sure that this is only executing on the server. So once this RPC is called from a client, it prints out a message on the server, it updates how many calls we've had from the client, and then we respond to the client, hey, we got your message. This RPC call to the client would actually call to all clients because I don't have a specific client ID selected here, but that's okay because this is just a hello world. And the next RPC we have is only called from the server. And we know that because we have this authority mode set in the RPC annotation. 
And once we receive this message from the client, we print out the message and then we also add the message to our UI. And the way I'm triggering these RPCs to be called, you can hit the send message button on our interface to call this function down here and it will print out that we're sending a message and then it actually makes the RPC call to the server. So when you click on the send message to server button, it calls this server RPC right here, which is up here. It prints it out on the server, updates how many calls we have, and then it sends a message right back to the client RPC, which is down here. And then we update our status text. So let's have a quick demo of what that looks like. So the first thing we need to do is export this project for the server. So you go up to export, and if you don't have a server option here, you hit add, and then you add this Linux option, and then this will show up. You don't have anything to do over on the initial options page because the architecture is x86-64 by default. So come over to resources and select the resources that you want to include. So if you had some client side objects that you didn't want to include in your server side build because you want to reduce the cost of, of those server side builds, you can uncheck them here. So I have everything checked because everything is needed. And then all you do is hit export project. I'm just naming it server and you hit save. Close that out. And as you can see here, these are the files that are created and this is what we're gonna to upload to our EC2 server. And if you're curious on how to set up an EC2 instance to push out your server build, I actually did another video. It might be Unity specific, but at least the EC2 part is the same. So go check that out if you're curious on how to set up an EC2 instance to get it ready for your Godot server. And to upload it to the server, I'm using SCP. And of course I use EC2 user at the IP address of the server. So let's go ahead and upload that. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and SSH into that server. Great. So now I'm in the EC2 server. And if you wanna take a look at the server folder, it's exactly what we just built. So let's go ahead and run the Godot server. And you can see here that I pass in the dash S command line argument to indicate that it needs to run as the server version. Okay, so now the Godot server is running on the EC2 instance, and you can see it printed out the dash S argument to indicate to start as a server. So let's go ahead and run the client. So as soon as the client starts, it's going to try to connect to the server. So if the server is not running, it'll just kind of sit there. So make sure your server is running for this test before you start the client. So keep an eye over in this server console here because as soon as I hit play, it's gonna show the client is connected. And there it is. So we have our status updated that says we connected to the server from the client and our server has indicated that, yep, this client has connected. So if we hit send message to server, it'll send a canned message. So let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. Our message was received on the server and you can tell because we passed in our client ID and the server sent a message right back that says right back at you, client count number one. So number one just means how many messages we've sent. So if I send another message. There's two, three, four. And of course, if you look down in the output, you can see we've sent four messages there. And of course, if we hit this X, it will disconnect us from the server. And you can see here, our server is printed out that that client has disconnected. And if you wanna just kill that Godot server, just go ahead and hit Control C and we're done. And then go ahead and type exit to get out of there. So I know this is a pretty simple, basic setup for client server, but it is a hello world. But think about it, right out of the box, Godot gives you the ability to export a dedicated Linux server build that we were able to immediately put on an EC2 instance and have a connection between the client and server. You had access to RPCs. They do have uh, like sync var functionality. And if you are using EC2 to test, make sure you shut it down when you're done using it because you don't wanna burn through your free tier status. And if you've enjoyed this video, let me know with a like and subscribe and keep me posted on whatever little network projects you've been able to spin off with this new Godot engine and our journey through this learning experience, this collective learning experience. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.